Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'd like to uh, call to order our Legislative Committee public hearing meeting of November 13th, 2021. 10 a.m. scheduled. Uh, Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Alderman Boyd. Alderwoman Davis. Present. Alderman Vicoro. Present. Alderman Calder. Alderwoman Boyd. Alderman Muhammad. Alderman Odenberg. Present. Alderwoman Morton. Alderwoman Navarro. Present. Alderwoman Middlebrook. Present. Alderwoman Clark Hubbard. Chairman Balmer. President Reed. Here. Alderman Boyd. Alderman Coder. Alderwoman Boyd. Alderman Muhammad. Alderwoman Martin, Alderwoman Clark Hubbard, Chairman Bomber. Six present, quorum has not been established. I thought I saw uh, Clark Hubbard. Maybe she just had to get. I know she texted earlier, texted me and said she's having connectivity issues. I'm a caller now. Okay. I thought I saw her pop in. Maybe she had to, it went back out. We'll give a, a, a couple of more minutes. And we probably will continue as a public hearing. We're not gonna be taking any uh, votes. So I just wanted to make sure that the public uh, has the opportunity to see as many older persons as possible present. So we're gonna give it another minute. That's fine. Heather, that's a pretty picture behind you. I like that. Thank you. I took it. It's it's the Muni. I oh, took it okay. last week on a walk. <laughs> <laughs> I figured people were getting sick of seeing my dining room. No, it looks <laughs> nice. Yeah. It looks nice. So, Alderman Vicaro, you aren't know, complimenting on my white walls and no splash of color. But... Uh, I think you need to jazz it up a little bit. Paint it or put a painting behind you. you know? Something on the wall. <laughs> I don't want to say anything because this is actually live right now. Technically, <laughs> it's true. Oh, I'll, keep it, I'll keep it. I'll keep it. it. Yeah. Clean. All right. Oh, Shane is online watching. That's wonderful. Alderman Cone. I know a lot of aldermen have activities going on today, and so um, yeah, like Alderman Muhammad has a neighborhood meeting that I, I'll be attending, and uh, also this today. Alderman Boyd has an activity as well this morning, and I want to say it's a joint. Uh, Alderman Middlebrook, Alderman Vicaro, yes, sir. I think we got your dogs. All from the top of your glory. And I got the doors closed. I'm going to have to go in an insulated room. <laughs> they're, they're, they, uh, they're our kids. They're all adopted, but we don't tell them that. Yeah. <laughs> and they're not, you know how some people got dogs and they are very well behaved and very well trained? Ours are very well crazy. Yeah, yeah. You ever see that uh, movie, A Christmas Story, where all the dogs rush in and steal the turkey? That's our yeah. dogs. Our okay. dogs run like a pack. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, uh, no, it's 10.06, and I think we'll go ahead and uh, start our meeting. Uh, you can start if you would like to start with that presentation from time of the map. That may give you a little bit more time. Okay, so what I wanted to do is um, make sure that I set the parameters for the meeting. We are reviewing Board Bill 101. It is sponsored by President Lewis Reed and Alderman Joseph Vollmer. Uh, this is an, an ordinance. 
uh, pertaining to the <clears throat> redistricting and bound boundaries of the wards for the city of St. Louis. And <clears throat> we are repealing the ordinance number 68981, which is codified as chapter 2.12 of the revised code of the city of St. Louis in 2021, establishing new ward boundaries with an emergency clause. So now we have established the purpose of the meeting and uh, I would like to move forward with uh, the recommendation of President Reed and uh, ask that the current map that was published would be uh, provided on the screen so that the public can see it. Thank you. As we go forward in our uh, meeting today, if someone needed to make reference for an area that they have interest in, they can, if they don't already have it in front of them, they can see uh, on the map and we can also see. There's uh, four people currently signed up to speak. And the first person uh, that I'll call is Joshua Lawrence. Joshua Lawrence, are you with us this morning? Hi, can you hear me? No, I can't and see you. Thank you. Oh, hey, cool, cool, cool. I'm glad okay. when I get it right on the first try. All righty. So um, it has been our position to swear people in before they start speaking, okay? Yep. Uh, do you solemnly swear and or uh, abide by the oath of affirmative that everything you're saying is true? Yeah, definitely. All right, thank you, sir. Would you please state your name and uh, the block that you live on in the city? Yeah, so my name is Joshua Lawrence. Uh, I use he, him, his pronouns. I'm on the 4,000 block of California. Right now, is that it? All right, go right ahead, sir. Okay, yeah, cool, cool, yeah. Ahead. And I'm uh, in my house, not in a vehicle or anything like some legislatures. Uh, but I actually do want to talk about how I actually like this new map, okay. but I'm still opposed to the process. Uh, right. I do think that, unfortunately, the first time that we had this map, uh, we got little to no information. Uh, the one thing we had was a small, low-resolution image that came from one source, and it was up to us as St. Louisans to use our free labor to actually provide more context and more information to people who then who had to testify whether they were for it or against it in one day. Um, while we do have this new information, and I think the city has done a wonderful job on their new website, we still only got, what, two days to digest it? And like I said, I think I like this new map, but within two days, I really can't tell too much. Uh, and when we brought these uh, comments towards you all as a board for the members that, you know, were there, we largely got kind of chastised, really, uh, which was really disheartening, right? We were told, oh, well, you're spreading misinformation. We're being transparent. But when you're told you're not being transparent, you're not being transparent. You don't get to say, oh, we're being transparent and you're automatically transparent, right? It is something that if somebody tells you you're not being transparent, you definitely aren't, right? We aren't coming at this from a position of, oh, we're just mad and upset. It's, we don't know what's going on because we don't get the information that we need to make these decisions. And we're not getting enough time to actually get this context out. Uh, I just think that, you know, it's disappointing that there was a wait and hurry up fashion where we didn't even begin to prepare to do this until the very last minute. I know you all say we need the census numbers. We need the census numbers. That makes sense, but we still barely even outlined a process. Uh, so like I said, I think, you know, I think the map's fine for what it is, for what I can tell, but the process is just frustrating and 2023 can't come soon enough. Thanks. 
Thank you very much for your testimony, Mr. Lawrence. And I'm gonna ask you to please stay engaged. Continue to uh, provide your opinion and we'll have another public hearing on Monday. So that gives folks a few more days. And again, thank you so very much for your opinion. Uh, the next person that is uh, listed to speak is uh, Dr. S.J. Creek. Dr. Creek. Hi, good morning, Alder Davis. Good morning. Uh, first, I'd just like to uh, swear you in. Do you uh, swear and affirm that everything you're saying is going to be true? I do. All right. So please uh, state your name. Uh, and if you wanted to add anything, I see you just use your initials. Please feel free to state it as you wish. And also the block that you live on in the city. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, my name is SJ Creek and I live, um, actually I also live on California like Joshua. Um, I'm on the 2600 block. Okay. Please proceed. Great. Uh, I just wanna say thank you to the committee for providing more opportunities for citizens to speak up. Thank you for today and for Monday. Um, and just appreciate getting a chance to share my thoughts. I've been following pretty closely and watching some of the public commentary so far. And I've heard a lot of good comments from my uh, from fellow citizens, things that I, I you know, pretty much wholeheartedly support. Um, I wanted to just raise a couple points, um, some of which you may have heard before, but I think they, they bear repeating. Um, the first is that, you know, <sighs> My, my preference for a, a map drawing would be a nonpartisan committee. Um, I would like to see, you know, St. Louis has a wealth of, we have demographers, we have GIS mappers, we have political scientists, sociologists. We have a lot of really good institutions that are rooted and invested in the city who could provide folks who are um, nonpartisan, but really smart and really savvy um, at drawing a solid map that will, I think, move St. Louis into the, the the next page, the next chapter of, of our um, of our city's um, future. And I, it's not that I don't think that the committee at hand can't draw a good map, so please don't, don't think that, but we do have um, a structure that just isn't quite as transparent. Um, it's not publicly driven, it's not citizen driven, it's, it's, it's driven by ways that, you know, I, I'm sure you all are really great folks, but I don't know exactly what your motives are and this is this is your jobs and your livelihood at stake and you're you're sort of drawing these lines in ways that I mean maybe maybe you're being honest I, I probably you are but it's possible that you're not and so I think the best way forward is is one that that takes this out of a, the political um in the sort of partisan world and puts us into like this is into the hands of citizens and experts who do this, um, and who, who understand what needs to go into a good map like that. When we do it in a partisan fashion behind closed doors, we're, I mean, it, it feels like a Republican gerrymandering that's happening all over the, the country. And I don't think that's the intention, but that's what it looks like. And it doesn't feel good as a citizen to see that and wonder if that's what's going on. So, you know, I think the people most impacted by redistricting should not be leading this charge. Um, and I think we should instead rely on the public to, and on, on nonpartisan experts to draw these lines and, and build our next, next chapter. So thank you for this opportunity to speak. Very much appreciate it. All right, thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Creek, I'm gonna ask you to please stay engaged. And also, if you have an opportunity to look in the portal, I think there's some additional information that uh, you will find helpful. Uh, and uh, again, thank you for taking your time to come and speak with us this Saturday morning. Our next speaker is Linda Braboy. Braboy, and I hope I said that right. Yes, that's fine. It's close enough. How <laughs> okay. are you? Good morning. Good morning. May I uh, swear you in very quickly, please? Do you yes. affirm that everything that you will say to us will be true? Yes, I do. All right, would you please list your name properly and uh, also 
give us the block that you live in in the city? Yes, Linda Braboy, and my um, block is 4400 of West Pine Boulevard. All right, thank you very much. Uh, please uh, go forward, you have three minutes. Okay, um, I'm gonna try to be very fast and brief. I had a couple of questions, but I may not get to all of them. Um, I'm just concerned uh, about redistricting. I wasn't quite sure what it mean. Um, well, I remember when we did the uh, voting, um, I think it wasn't too clear of what it meant. Um, I hate that people be losing their uh, positions and maybe staffing and things like that. Um, but I guess we can't change it now. Um, I guess it's etched in stone. Um, but my concerns was um, the struggling wards that we have already in certain neighborhoods. I was just wondering, uh, like for neighborhoods, it's in zip code 6106 and 6107 and like 63115, et cetera, uh, the poorest like type of neighborhoods. I was wondering uh, what does this mean for them? Do this benefit them uh, combining the um, wards? And other one, I was like, I was concerned also about the fairness of the redistricting. Uh, like when these wards uh, are divided, uh, when they're finalized, uh, what do that mean like for uh, funding like, um, you know, towards the wards? Would it be spread it out equally um, to some of the poorest wards or some of the world wealthier wards? What do that mean? Um, will, um, you know, the funding be spread it equally um, towards the poorest wards and the, war, um, the uh, uh, wealthiest wards uh, when it's finalized? I know under the 28 wards that uh, was in the neighborhood that we have now, you know, and I know right now lower funding is allocated to those poorest neighborhoods right now. Would it still be like that or would it, would it benefit? I basically want to know would it benefit uh, from the um, um, bringing together of the wards or redistricting what have you. Um, and especially for the 6106, 6107, 6115 neighborhoods, um, like zip code 6108, 6110, 63110 and 631131. Um, 63, um, there are some of the, um, you know, wealthier neighborhoods, and, you know, they look very differently, you know, when you go from one to another, as far as sidewalks, streets, things like that. And that's my concern. I just want to make sure that the neighborhoods um, are treated fairly. And also, I um, want to know how will funding be allocated. Um, when the new wars are up in play, um, what do that mean? Um, like the guidelines to city officials, you know, would they distribute the money um, equally, basically? And also, I had another one, but um, I won't ask that one. But what I do want to know is when the wars are, uh, when they are um, uh, redistricted, Will that change the property value of some of the homeowners, whether they're in the wealthiest neighborhoods or the poorest neighborhoods? Would that help them or would it benefit some of the poorest ones or uh, the wealthier neighborhoods? Will they also benefit or would it take away from them? That's what my concerns are. Okay, you still have time if you want to ask that additional question. Oh, okay. Um, the additional question that I want to know is, um, the buying of the wards um, in the city, we're, you know, we're, it's like, we're dividing ourselves. You know, I, I hate that people, and you all are doing it to me. I don't know how everyone else feel. I feel that you are doing a, a wonderful job. I know it's hard to um, divide a city, you know, the way that you all have. And I viewed all three of the um, uh, maps that you all came up with. And each one is very different, you know, each one is very different. And so I, I don't know if I would have been able to do it, but I just want to commend you all because you all have done a really good job to me at that. Um, but, you know, we're dividing ourselves, um, you know, in a city, you know, and I hate that it's seen as, you know, racial, like black and white and this and that. But, you know, I guess some people, you know, is so stuck in the past, you know, and sometimes I know you cannot get out of that, you know, that's how, that's just how it is, you know, but um, I think we all, you know, as a city, 
you know, the country's divided. We in St. Louis, we have so many things going on in the area with crime, you know, but um, I just want to know, you know, where do it end? Can we like, when these wars are divided, can we work on bringing us all together? You know, we can be a first, you know, can we work on bringing us all together? So it won't be like, oh, this neighborhood here is over here and this is what's going on. This, you know, we are all one people. You know, I think we should, you know, focus on the neighborhoods, of course, because without change, you know, while changing the neighborhoods, you know, you have to change the people too. You know, um, I, and that, that, that's all basically, you know, I have to say. Well, I thank you so very much for taking your time today to share with us. I would like to ask you to stay engaged. I would also like to ask you to look in the portal, um, most especially by Monday. Uh, some of the answers will be there for you because uh, I think it's important that we respond. And some of it is already there. There was some new information when I looked at it this morning. So I think a couple of those questions you asked are already answered in the portal. So stay engaged. And again, thank you so very much. Thank you. Can I ask you a question? How do you look in the portal? Now, I have a technical person online, and she will put it in the chat for you, okay? Thank you so much. All righty. Uh, our next person to speak is Michael Stevens Esquire. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, my name is Mike Stevens. I live in the 6200 block of Waterman. That's the uh, last. May, may I swear you in, please? Sure. Uh, do you affirm that everything you sh shall share with us will be the truth? Yes. Thank you, sir. So you have okay. indicated your name and 100 block. Thank you. So I live in the Parkview neighborhood, which is in the westernmost. Uh, city block, 6200 block of Waterman. We are a part of the larger Skinker to Bolivar neighborhood. Um, <clears throat> the, I, I like the first and second drafts better than the third draft. Our neighborhood is um, the focus of our neighborhood and those around us are the park. We live immediately northwest of Forest Park. That's sort of the focus of all of the neighborhoods around the park. I believe that the uh, neighborhoods around the park should stay in the same ward to the extent that's possible. The prior first and second draft had what is now Ward F together with our ward, which is more appropriate. What, what's happened now in the third draft is uh, you've taken the Skinker to Bolivar neighborhood and basically lopped it off and added, to, added it to several neighborhoods further north, which I think is inappropriate. Um, it's more appropriate to have those neighborhoods uh, together in the same ward because all those neighborhoods are focused on Forest Park. And I think some of the other, those other neighborhoods are great, but may not sh necessarily sh share the most significant common interest of our neighborhood, which is Forest Park. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, for your uh, comments and thank you for uh, being uh, involved because you've definitely been paying attention and please continue to do that. Uh, I wanted to uh, make sure that you do use the portal to see new information other than just deal with the map. So please look for that too because uh, we're adding additional information uh, as we move forward uh, so that people have a better understanding of what is taking place uh, without having to guess or wonder, okay? Uh, that was the end of our list for those who have signed up to speak today. What I'd like to do now is uh, move forward with the balance of our agenda. And, but right before I do that, I wanted to ask the president if he had any uh, additional comments. No, I just want to thank everybody for um, coming and for these comments. Uh, the maps that you see and 
in front of you today uh, is largely, like all, all of the maps have been based on the input that we got from the community, from the aldermen, neighborhood associations, business associations and alike. Uh, uh, and you've seen how that information has been incorporated into the, these maps. And I really like the tone that we've heard from all the residents today. Uh, they, they're bringing uh, their uh, you know, ideas and um, you know, giving us something to work, work with, right? Um, you know, it's good to hear some of the concerns, but if you can buckle it together with an idea that helps us to hone in on it and to be able to, um, uh, you know, incorporate some of some of your ideas and concerns in the in the what we're doing. So, uh, and I appreciate all the work everybody's put in on it. Also, so we're in a good place right now, uh, especially considering we're cutting the wards in half. This is a uh, uh, we're in a, a very good place to put out a good solid legal map. But you know. Uh, uh, we still have some work to do, but uh, we're, we're closing in on it. Thank you very much, uh, President Reed. I know that you have a busy schedule before you today, and I thank you for taking time to be on uh, this uh, public hearing this morning. All right, thank you. All right, there's uh, for the balance of our agenda, we have no resolutions to review before us. Uh, I did wanna take a moment uh, for committee discussion and at, allow each alder person to uh, share the, uh, some thoughts with us. And so uh, I will start with, as Alderm I don't see Alderman Boyd, no. Okay, so uh, Alderman Vaccaro. So yeah, I, you know, for those that say this was not transparent, I disagree. For, you know, and I see the Facebook comments, which, if you ask me, uh, seems more like they wanted a jury manager. They're like, well, it'd be good if we can put this person against that person. It almost seems like, um, you know, it almost seems like we're on the voice where they're going to pit this person against that. This is a blank slate. Nobody's even guaranteed they're even going to run. The ward that has been drawn for me certainly takes up parts of the 16th ward, the 23rd ward, which very little bit of it that was left, part of the uh, all of what was the 24th ward, and part of the 17th ward. And that was because uh, as, as the map was being put together, it was the way to fit neighborhoods or try to keep neighborhoods together the best way they could. You know, is this my ideal map? No. If I was gerrymandering a map, it would certainly look, my, my area would certainly look different. I, I you know, I, you know, it, this is, I mean, it's gonna be an open election. I think you're gonna see a lot of people filing for office. Mm -hmm. So when you sit down and you say, well, this, oh, this is going to be a good race. And I've seen this already. Oh, this person against that person. Is that assuming that no one else will run? You know, so, I mean, I'm just a little frustrated by the, um, you know, the saying this hasn't been transparent when, uh, you know, it's been very transparent. Why, you know, the attack on the city and the city aldermen are the being bullied by people, you know, that seem to want to attack the city or the city aldermen. Why aren't you out in the county? They're drawing a map too. And, you know, it, it, it seems to me that this map has, has been very well thought out, has been, uh, the changes were made, I know, like, uh, for instance, Southampton was upset that they got split. So by keeping Southampton together, trying to appease the Southampton group, then all of a sudden the war that become K had to pick up people, you know, uh, you know, and, and the war that was M had to be moved around somewhat. So this map, 
you know, has definitely, absolutely had the input of everybody that has felt like they want to participate. We even went out of our way when uh, Jeffrey Boyd was uh, chairing the meeting to have people that weren't even signed up speak. We tried to make sure everybody had say. There's the letters that came in. This map is, um, you know, the last time we did one 10 years ago, didn't have this kind of input. This has been the most transparent thing. I, I you know, and, and certainly if we do what everybody wants to do, I guess we would have to, as I look at it, we would have to move F somewhere. If you move F, then I guess you got to move D or E. Um, and, and the problems come in that this, this, you know, you have so many things that factor into this. Trying to keep neighborhoods together was not, it, it, it's, it was, well, you know, as, as a group, we tried to strive to do, but it's certainly not a requirement. The racial and diversity, all those things, you know, the, the amount of people equal in each one, those are the things that by law, and th this is a map that, you know, we're putting together a map that may not please a, a lot of people, or, you know, but uh, certainly I get really offended by people that say, oh, this is gerrymandered. Again, if I was gerrymandering it, it would look a whole lot different you know, uh, you, you know, even though I haven't said what I'm I've decided if I'm going to run, not run, I've been both ways. What I'm going to do, I know that talking to different aldermen, there's a lot of group of us that are saying we're not sure. We're going to wait and see. So, for those that say this is jury mandated to make this better for one alderman or another, you're looking at a blank slate. There are no this map. There are no alderman's areas that fit into a process. So anyway, I just get a little frustrated at, at, at the, you know, the, the people that say this is gerrymandered and this is oh, this is a, a a group of aldermen. We're we're elected. We represent the people. And there's more elections coming up. And not everybody. Vicaro, I hate to cut you off, but I would like to let some of the other people have a moment. Okay, I didn't know we were under a time restriction. Well, kind of a little bit. So um, then, then I'll I'll go ahead and jump off. I you know, no, I'll, sir, I guess when I start timing, everybody let me know. Sir, I, what I was doing was looking at the whole committee. I thought I'd give everybody you know five minutes or so, and then we could come back around again. Well, no, I'm fine. I, I had my say. I'm repeating myself anyway. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, I just kind of lost my train of thought there. Uh, I'm sorry on that. Um, uh, Alderman Coder, are you on? No, he hasn't made it. And I don't see uh, Alderwoman Boyd. Alderman Muhammad, Alderman Oldenburg. Thank you, Madam Chair. I don't have any comments. I appreciate the public coming out this morning. All right, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, Alderwoman Martin, did you get on? No. Uh, no. Okay, Alderwoman Navarro. Thank you, Chairwoman. I just also want to say thank you to everyone who has commented so far, either in these public hearings or online. It's extremely helpful. And um, I know we didn't have a lot of people here this morning, but it is Saturday morning and we have had dozens of people on the previous ones and hopefully Monday night as well. And the online comments have been really helpful. Um, I This map has definitely changed in response to a lot of the things that we have heard. Um, and and I encourage people to look at the FAQ that's on the website. Um, I think it's very helpful, the stlewis-mo.gov slash alderman slash redistricting. There's a lot of really good information out there because um, you know, if anybody has tried to jump in and work with the numbers, work with the data, take into consideration um, the fact that a lot of people want to try to keep neighborhoods together, that we also want to try to bridge some of the divides in our city, you put all of that into a pot and 
we can't possibly do all of those things for everyone. Um, so we are trying to do the best that we can and the public input really does help. Um, so, you know, we are getting closer to a final map. And even though, you know, we're limited in some ways based on the math, there are still some tweaks that we can do to this. So again, I just encourage everyone to keep sharing their input um, and we will get this, you know, as, as close as we can to, you know, to the map, to the best map possible. So thank you again to everybody and um, please check out those FAQs. And I know a lot of us on the committee were available by email. If people have questions. There is a lot going on here in this map. And um, I think all of the conversation that I've heard so far has been, has been really helpful. So thank you. Thank you, uh, Alderwoman. Uh, Alderwoman Middlebrook and Alderwoman, okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. Go right um, ahead. I just want to say thank you to the public for coming out and spending the Saturday morning with us and giving us their input and also let second ward residents know that I hear your concerns and um, this is just a draft still we're in the process of, of completing this so um, please continue to send in your concerns your comments your ideas so thank you all right thank you very much uh, much older woman older woman Hubbard Clark Hubbard Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee, Woman Middlebrook. I heard our youngest committee member in the background there, huh? <laughs> She's probably changing the map herself, but I just, again, wanted to echo and thank um, people for coming out on a Saturday morning and engaging the people that have been engaged on so many different platforms. All of this is absolutely making a difference. I can say, um, wholeheartedly that the changes that were made in E, which is would be the district that I represent, uh, currently live in, those changes came directly from the portal, directly from emails, directly from phone calls, texts, conversations, and passing on information. So I don't want any of you all to list, be listening in and think that somebody is not listening because we absolutely are. And I know that change is scary for some people. But like Ms. Brad, um, uh, Ms. Bradboy said, this is about making sure we move this city forward collectively and together. So any lines that continue to perpetuate um, distance, perpetuate uh, separation, I think this is our opportunity to change, to make that change that we need in our city and bridging communities and neighborhoods that are already have foundations and have spurs of development and have things going on with um, communities that have not seen that and have not been exposed to that. This is absolutely an opportunity to do that. And that's what we, um, I think most of us are fighting for. I know again, change is scary for some people and we hear in the comments that some people don't wanna be connected with other communities and that's okay because that's how we um, hopefully can come together and show people that we can work together. These lines, these lines really, whether they're on the map or in your head, if you're about the city of St. Louis, they're not gonna make that much of a difference. When somebody calls me from a different ward right now, I don't say, nope, you don't live in the 26th ward, so I'm not gonna address that. What I do is either help or connect them with the people and the resources in their community that they can be there, all the person or whoever. So the person that said Joshua Lawrence, which I follow him, he said he can't wait till 2023. Hey, me too, because that's our opportunity to work together to get a good 14 people in there that will again work together and not continue or not, not wanna work with other people and not keep these little areas um, where, they, where, they, where they're just not being good neighbors, if you don't want to call it for lack of a better word. So, you know, again, we have an opportunity here that we cannot waste. I say it all the time, no opportunity wasted. St. Louis's time is now. If we don't get it right this time, shame on us. So again, like my um, colleague from the 28th said, we're all available. We all answer phone calls, emails, whatever you need from us. We give different opportunities. We try to make sure we are open and accessible as much as we can and um, have conversations, the tough conversations that's gonna move our city forward. So thank you again for all of your comments. Please, like Madam Chairwoman said, stay engaged. Don't let your distrust for this process or your distrust for any one of us personally that again, like Alderman DeParo said, might not even be here in 23. Don't let any of that cause you to disengage from the process or from the system because we need you. So thank you all. Thank you very much. Um, I just had a couple of comments before uh, I excuse the alderman and adjourn. Uh, it is one of the most rewarding things when people have an opportunity to engage. Community organizing, that's what it's all about. 
is to find people to work on causes or missions or deliberate change. Sometimes it's not easy. Most times it's not easy. But we are doing, a. I think, the, when I say we, I'm talking about the citizens of St. Louis. I think we're doing a good job because you definitely have been sending in your concerns, uh, talking to your older persons, uh, having committee meetings uh, in your neighborhood associations talking about it. Continue to do that until we are finished. And then make sure you stay engaged in organizing and making sure that you're looking for your next alder person. Because as Alderman Vicaro stated, none of us are guaranteed anything. Every seat is open in the 2023 election. So know that it won't just be whoever is the current alder person running and or the one that they've been adjoined with. I will predict that it will be a minimum of six people on the ballots for each one of these wards. They'll probably range more like the eight to 10 um, for each one of them. So we're looking forward to this uh, final process. Please go in the portal and read more about the process. What are the federal requirements? Because those come before anything else. We don't get to set the rules ourselves. We must follow the rules. And uh, some people don't understand that part of it. But um, I'm excited. I want to ask you to listen in on Monday at 6 p.m. There will be another public hearing. Uh, there's no reason why we shouldn't be together on this process. Being apart and pointing fingers gets us nothing. I'd like to now excuse the older persons for necessary absence. And clerk, would you please indicate uh, in the record for those older persons who are not here. And um, I, I know that uh, we didn't have a lot of speakers. And so if by chance, there is just one more thing a committee person would like to say, I'm going to give another six minutes to this process and uh, just raise your hand and go for it. Or would you like me to go back and start at the front with Alderman Vaccaro? I, I'm good. I, I, I said what I was going to say. You're OK? All right. Anybody else? I see no hands raised. I thank all of you all for being present today and this meeting is adjourned.